Uh, I, it is my honor to welcome you to the third of the series of Zoom meetings we are having with the governor of Edo State, Governor Godwin Obaseki. And today we are also privileged to have the deputy governor, uh, Honorable Philip Shraibu, to accompany the governor today. My name is Comrade Lante Ikmamusa Oriahi. I live in the UK, and tonight I am your host. To join me and call this program is a very reputable woman, one who in very many quarters need no introduction because she's been doing a lot to support the Edo vision across the world. And she's no other person as I introduce to you Lady Esosa Eku. Ed Lady Sosa Edo Giawere. Welcome, Lady Sosa. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Lante. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you today. I'm really excited being with you, a true man of Edo, a man with great values. Thank you for having me. Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Edo State, Godwin Nogayase Obaseki. Lovely to have you with us here, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank so, you very much, Lady Esosa. Uh, it is now my honor uh, to welcome the Deputy Governor, uh, Honorable Philip uh, Schreibu, if he's uh, uh, ready. Honorable Deputy Governor, sir. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. We are glad to have you. Thank you very much. Mr. Good evening, all. Good evening, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Uh, well, going forward, as part of our rules of engagement tonight, uh, let me inform you all that tonight we have panelists we are going to be taking questions from. But tonight's model is going to be different in that we'll take a question from a panelist which the governor or the deputy governor or both would respond to. Thereafter, we'll take three questions from the members, the, the, the Zoom floor audience, you know, uh, the governor or the deputy or both of them will respond to those questions, you know, as joint questions. Uh, it is equally important to note that for those who are going to be asking questions, uh, they shall be selected at random. And uh, if you're selected to ask a question, it is important you understand that for every question, Nobody should spend more than 90 seconds. That is a minute, 30 seconds to ask their questions. And I call it, it's my pleasure to let you know that every question is programmed for 90 seconds. And if you go beyond 90 seconds, you may find that the mic is going to be muted and that is automatic, you know, uh, uh, automatically programmed. Uh, more than that, you can equally send your questions to the chat box. And of course we have a number of persons you know, backroom staff that will be looking at the chat box to select, you know, questions, of course, that we're going to throw at the governor and all his deputy. Um, for this program, it is important to let you know that we are focusing on security and, of course, electoral violence. And we expect that questions will be raised in these areas. It is my honor right now to hand over to Lady Esosa Edogiawere, to Thank you, Latte. Let's start with the panelists. Thank you very much, Latte. Our first panelist today is Desiree Iyobo Tisdale from the United States. Desiree is a healthcare administrator in the medical field, and she's a passionate and advocate for people with additional needs. Madam Desiree, what's your question, please? Can you unmute yourself, please, Madam Desri? Uh, if we can't find her, uh, can you maybe let's also can we oh, move hello. to the next she's here. She's here. Yes, we can hear you now. Can you hear? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Good evening, Your Excellency, and thank you for your love for Edo people. Thank you for your stand against the locust mentality that has so permeated our beloved country. Thank you for taking a stand. Uh, my question is, 
Your Excellency. We know that there are lots of commercials to dissuade the um, youth from participating in ballot box snatching. How can the security of the voters' ballots be guaranteed during this uh, um, upcoming election? Thank you. Very good. Your Excellency, sir. Your Excellency. Uh, can we try to see if we can uh, unmute the uh, uh, Excellency if he's muted? So, uh, thank you very much, Desiree. Um, do you want me to take the question or my deputy? You can take it, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think first let's try and understand the origins and the, you know, genesis of electoral violence in Nigeria, but in particular, Edo State. Um, it's been a practice that's been with us for a long while, but in Edo, as in some other states in the Niger Delta, it has taken um, a different pro a, a proportion. Uh, first, because you have a lot of young unemployed uh, people who the politicians find as ve veritable instruments during politics to use to uh, achieve their political objective. Um, in the case of Edo, what we've noticed is that it's tied to this whole practice of, um, you know, agberos, you know, uh, motopat boys um, who unfortunately we deprived of quality education over the years. So it's been a vicious cycle where Political leadership does not provide the basic the right uh, education, the right skills for these young men, and they then use them as praise to perpetuate you know, their political aspirations. And in doing so, they use them for political violence. What we have um, done um, in Edo is at the beginning of this administration, we worked very, very hard. I mean, the deputy governor handles that exercise for me. Well, we try to get as many of them off the streets into the work. You know, we try to get them to assist us, assist the local governments with collection of revenues. But I can, I will be the first to admit that they're, they're, in terms of numbers, they run into thousands and we couldn't put all of them into proper work. What can be done? I think it's mostly persuasion and also law enforcement. Um, if the law enforcement agents uh, are able to live up to their responsibility by ensuring that they, there's deterrence and that there are repercussions to this act, then it's likely to dissuade more younger people or more people from participating in electoral violence. I cannot recall where people have been prosecuted and jailed in the past for participating in electoral violence. Um, I'm not sure it is very difficult to prove in court. So what we, uh, we, what we advocate and suggest is first, persuasion, and secondly, getting the security services to live up to their responsibilities, making sure that um, cases of Electoral violence that are reported are promptly dealt with and people are prosecuted. Thank you, SNSC. I'm sure that answers Madame Desiree's question. Uh, Comrade Oriahi, what's the next question? Comrade? Sorry. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, we are not going to quickly go to the, to the Zoom floor. And uh, uh, we have uh, Henry Olova. Is it there? Henry Olova. Please, can we unmute him? Yes, Henry Olova is here. Thank Please, you. ask your question. You have one minute, 30 seconds, sir. OK. Thank you very much. Um, your Excellency, 
uh, the question is uh, centered on um, the uncollected over 400,000 PVCs as detailed by the INEC. How are we going to secure those PVCs that are uncollected? Because to me, they might be used as an additional um, voters um, count for the opposition, over 400,000. And secondly, how no, are we- You have one question, sir. Thank you so okay. much. And the SNC has already taken note of that. We'll take another quick question, but this one will be from uh, Chief Taku. I, I would hope that the question from Henry Olova will be responded to by His Excellency. And probably the one from Chief Taku will be taken by the deputy. Chief Taku, sir, if you are there. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Your Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, and Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, uh, I'm happy to have been invited here by my good friend, uh, Ambassador Matthew Waifo, and I thank these organizers for, uh, of this conference for providing this platform for Your Excellency to talk to your electorate, the people of Edo State, but also to those of us who are keen observers of the politics of the state of Nigeria and Africa in general. I am Chief Charles Taku. I'm the immediate past president of the International Criminal Court Bar Association. And Sorry, sir. Can I just quickly remind you that you have 60, uh, 90 seconds of your time and your microphone might shut down. OK. Um, so uh, in my, I'm now the lead counsel for DAFU at the International Criminal Court and other situation over 20 years. Now, my problem, uh, Excellency, is first and foremost to thank you so much because you are a politician of vision and record. And I say so because you are the first I've had to put security and security ahead of every preoccupation. And also you are the first to have put the right of your constituents to a free franchise, free poll, a right, constitutional right to elect their governor. I praise you for that, that is very rare on the African continent. My background in the tribunal for Rwanda, for Sierra Leone, and as counsel in the situation in Kenya, Dafu, and as leader of the African of the bar at the International Criminal Court, teaches me that regular politicians and people who want power for the sake of power go out and incite people to die. On the contrary, I heard you a while ago saying that you have programs to take this young man off the street. I've been very occupied with my friend, Matthew Iwaifo, about the young people are dying in the desert in the Mediterranean Sea, many of them for Edo State, and also the social programs you put in place to develop all part of Edo so they can come back and help to rebuild Edo and Africa. You are the first of its kind in Africa. I thank you for that. My question is this, is there any place in your program where you think you can partner with Edo diaspora, international partners, to strengthening this program of taking these young people off the street and put, making their lives useful for Edo. So the rest of Africa and those of us at the level of international justice can benefit on, on in order to help other countries to rebuild their system and keep these young people ahead. So that it's no longer die in the ocean, in the Mediterranean and, the, and also in the Sahara Desert. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Uh, I think with the length of the questions we have, uh, we we'll just want uh, uh, the governor and his deputy to, you know, to quickly just give uh, answers to these before we move forward. Thank you so much. Maybe, um, my deputy Philip, you want to take the question on, on collected PVCs, and I can now talk about the partnership with the last Please, can we unmute the deputy if he's uh, muted, please? Bathroom staff. All right. Can you, uh, your excellency? Yes. He's unmuted. Okay. Yes. okay, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of the uncollected PVCs, uh, we are actually monitoring yes. and, and by- um, First of all, uh, 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 yeah. As at last week, uh, the information that we have is that all the PVCs uncollected have been mopped and uh, they are kept in CBN for safe keep. Uh, so they are no longer with INEC. Uh, they have not uh, collected all of them and they are in uh, uh, CBN uh, safe. And uh, no 
uh, because of COVID-19, uh, there won't be any uh, collection of PVC by anybody for now until after the election and when the lockdown, uh, partial lockdown is over. So they are all in CBM for now for safekeeping and we are sure that uh, they will not be used for the elections. But even at that, we are still monitoring because we already have the total number of uh, PVC that are collected and uh, we are putting in place a lot of modalities to make sure that those unused PVCs do not surface through back door or front door. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Honorable Felix Tribal. Of course, uh, the governor, uh, governor, governor Baseki will now take, uh, you know, uh, the answer the, the next question. question. Yeah. Okay. So before I call my uh, panelist number two, I have a question from Mr. Joseph Ogbemudia for the governor to answer. Uh, Mr. Ogbemudia said, your excellency, you have well informed us in your manifesto that security amongst other areas is your top priority in Edo State. However, we are currently experiencing a high rise in concerns in regards to declaring support for you due to the level of intimidation and violence attack on towards your supporters. So my question is, what plans do you have in place to assure people, your supporters, that they will feel safe to, to openly declare support for you and to go to the, to the polling booths on the voting day and feel safe that we, they'll be able to vote for you? That's from Joseph of Bermudia. Thank you very much. You, you have just made it two questions for the governor. I think we should take it slow. Okay. Uh, the, the governor already have a question that uh, he's here to respond to. So to respond to. Yes. And where is he now? Yes, please. Can we unmute the governor if uh, his uh, uh, mic is muted, please? Backroom staff. Are we there? The governor doesn't seem to be in the room at this moment. We would lost him. Perhaps a technical issue. Okay. Uh, His Excellency, sir, uh, Honorable Philip Schreiber, sir, you want to take a go at this? We have two questions. The one was bordering on uh, uh, Nigerians in the diaspora. Yes. And the second one is actually bordering on uh, security, sir. Mr. Uh, I think the deputy governor is muted. Please, can we unmute uh, His Excellency, the deputy governor, please? Backroom staff, please. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the issue of uh, uh, security, we are looking like I did, and we have our plans on how to secure our vote and also secure our people. Uh, uh, we have a, a system in the country where uh, the governor is the chief security officer of the state, while the, the security gets their control from the federal. And there is, there is an aberration in, in that uh, constitutional provision, giving the power as, uh, of security to the governor in the state, whereas he does not have control over the police or the military. They get their, their orders from the federal. But even at that, what we've done is to, to, to get the traditional institution through getting our vigilantes, getting uh, our poor of, poor of uh, to, to, to gather intelligence, which will help us to also monitor the election. Uh, the security for now, we, we, are, we are working very hard to make sure that they are not compromised and to make sure that they, they do the right thing. And the governor is clear about this election. Uh, we need them to do the right thing. We need the vote of the people to count. Uh, there are a lot of intimidation, obviously, by the opposition. They've been mm. uh, intimidating us just uh, yesterday, day first today. Uh, we were in uh, Ward 10 in my local government, where mm -hmm. the immediate past governor came from, uh, Oshomole. And we, before we got there, they started shooting to disperse our, our, uh, the, our supporters. 
but we're able to, the security were at their best anyway to, to dispatch them and we still had our, our rallies. Uh, there are pockets of such things which we are uh, monitoring and we are also making sure that these people are arrested and prosecuted. But we hope that at the end of the day, before the election, we'll have a peaceful election and some of these people will be apprehended. Uh, for the issue of uh, partnership with diaspora, that is one major project that Mr. Governor is, ask, is interested in. If you re realize those from Canada, the governor visited Canada in one of the programs that, that was held uh, sometime last year or two years ago, where he gave his uh, take on partnership with those in diaspora. Because you have access to most of this grant, you have access to most of these facilities that could help us uh, to also optimize our level of development in the state. Because we have discovered that government alone cannot deal with the issue of development without partnership with private sector and at the same time with some most of you in diaspora because you have global access to some of these needs that we have. So in terms of partnership, uh, even our opposition, the opposition party are, are already using it even against us, which because they don't have the knowledge of what we are doing and they, they, they are short-sighted. For instance, they say we sign MOUs with uh, different companies. Uh, some of these uh, memorandum of understanding are things we have set up to partner with uh, diaspora, partners with business community to be able to have, to fast track our development, like the, uh, the Osioma power plant, which before the election by the grace of God will be, will be on to provide electricity for our industrial ops and some of our major facilities in the state. So I want to uh, tell Chief uh, Charles Taku that that window is very, very open and uh, we have that in our, our program for development. Thank you very much, uh, Right Honorable Felix Schreibel, the Deputy Governor of the Do State. Um, well, we are glad to have the Governor back, uh, but I will just hand over to to my colleague, Lady Esusa Dogi, I want to take, I mean, to call on the next uh, panelist, please. Okay. Our uh, second panelist is Dr. Idemudia, Dr. Taiwo Idemudia. Uh, Dr. Taiwo Idemudia is from the United, States, uh, United Kingdom. He's a renowned member of the Odionwere Council of the United Kingdom and Ireland. Uh, Dr. Idemudia is a retired gas company, Nigerian gas company in Nigeria, NMPC and one-time market analysis and head of economic for OPEC. Sir, Dr. Edemudia, what's your question? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Edogia. We deeply appreciate it. Your Excellencies, uh, the Governor, Governor Baseki, and Deputy Governor Shaibu, it's my great pleasure. And I thank you for all you've done in the state. In your first term, you have laid a solid foundation for development and security in a do state. From your performance, we look forward to your second term where you will certainly take the state to a level of preparedness for self-sustained growth and progress. Question is, what institutions and policies, Your Excellency, would you leave in place at the end of your second term to ensure that the gains and achievements of your administration are safeguarded and kept for a due posterity? It would be nice to know and really good to uh, have this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, Your Excellency, are you there? The Governor of Edo State, Governor Godwin Obaseke, is it there? Please, uh, backroom staff, see if he's muted so we can unmute him. He's just the video. He hasn't got video, but his microphone is actually moving. Sorry. 
Shall we give him a moment to come back and then he can answer the questions? Okay, while we are waiting for the yes. governor to Mazima's time, I will uh, call again on uh, His Excellency the Deputy Governor, Right Honorable Philip Shraibu, to you know, take a go at this. Your Excellency, sir. Yeah. Please, can we yeah, yeah. The Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, the politics we have in the country now, the, uh, many people think dividends of democracy is just tying the roads and uh, building the schools. That is a given for this administration. But one critical, critical uh, gains that we have achieved in this government that is not visibly seen is in terms of policies and institutionalizing most of the work that we are doing. For instance, the issue of, uh, uh, of uh, projects, the issue, the issue of making a new state an industrial hub in the country. I think the governor is back. Mm. I think he's back. I the don't governor think is back. I don't think he's fully back yet. Okay. 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 <laughs> it's, it's audio. Audio is uh, ready. Audio is on, but okay. Now he's back. He's back. Yes, sir, sir. We are still here. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry um, for the for the glitches okay. in technology. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Taiwei Demulia, for your question. Uh, the, 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 the whole mega agenda, uh, mega um, manifesto, is actually centered around institutionalizing the reforms we have started in the state. Uh, so, and what are the key pillars? First, it's actually rebuilding institutions. As you are all aware, the key, the, the key institutions for governance is the bureaucracy, the civil service. Without a bureaucracy, no system thrives, no system works in an orderly manner. And so one of the things we're doing is rebuilding, re reintroducing life into our public service. We are you know, ensuring that we make, meet our commitments, we pay salaries on time, we pay pensions when they leave, so give them that sense of security to make sure that we, we focus on capacity building, on training. If you come to Benin now, we've just finished building um, the John Odigye Oyegu Public Service Academy where we will undertake very thorough training of all our public servants across every cadre. The whole idea is to make sure that we begin to institutionalize everything we do. Um, we make sure that the public service, civil service work the way it should, make sure that people are employed properly and trained to do the, work, to do the work um, of proper governance. Um, Furthermore, we are looking at um, you know, beyond us, beyond our terms. We will be developing in very great details with world-class um, professionals, economists, <coughs> planners, a center development for Edo states, which will cover every spectrum of our life, you know, both social services, healthcare, education. Um, the physical space, you know, roads, infrastructure across the state so that subsequent, subsequent administrations, when they come in, they know what to do. They know where we are and what to do next. As I speak, we didn't meet anything. So we've essentially just been doing the best we can using, you know, the advantages we had in governance um, and in our, you know, in our previous lives. So to answer your question, again, the whole mega agenda is not about just doing short-term um, initiatives today. It's about creating institutions, processes, policies, and plans that will lead us to where we believe Edo should be uh, headed or where Edo should be within the next three decades. Okay. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was uh, indeed uh, deep and incisive. Uh, 
of course, I've uh, got three names here, you know, amongst the Zoom floor uh, participants that we are going to take questions from. But before I go into this, Your Excellency, I wish to ask this, uh, sir, this whole election process is majorly, amongst other things, about one thing, and that is a do people's willingness to join your administration to fight off godfatherism. Of course, the story is everywhere. You know, almost every Edo person know what is happening in Edo State. But the question I wish to ask, sir, is by the end of your second tenure, will you yourself assure Edo people that you will not be a godfather? Well, I didn't grow up in the tradition of political godfatherism. So I don't know. Audio connection does not. Mm. I think the audio is not very great. Just the line is fluctuating. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, because we, we, we tend to maximize mass time almost as much as yes, possible. Yes, absolutely. Can we uh, uh, unmute uh, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, to give the Do people the assurance that uh, the Governor of a Do State will not, at the end of his tenure, be a Godfather himself? Your Excellency, sir. Right Honorable Philip Schwaibel. Please, can we unmute him? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, again. Uh, I, I, we actually came in to, to, to serve and we came with a vision. And the fight that we have today is about the vision of the state. And what is that vision? That vision is to free the resources of Edo for development of Edo, not for some particular individual. And I can assure you that that is the fight. And any Godfatherism is going to be buried in this election. And when it is buried, I can tell you, you cannot raise ugly head again because the mm -hmm. backwardness of Edo State was as a result of some cabal just taking our collective uh, 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 part, uh, uh, heritage and our, our resources for our private use. I am telling you, this election is about that. This election will settle that. And I can tell you after this election, nobody, no one man can determine who governs the state. It's going to be collective. We came on the matra in 2007, a uh, 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 matra of let the people lead. And the people must lead. And when the people lead, it's, a, it's, it's obvious that those in leadership will do the will of the people. Because for them to remain in governance, the people must be satisfied. And they know mm -hmm. that if the people are not satisfied, they will use their PVC to vote them out. And that is how a do state will actually get to that uh, 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 vision that we have for it. Without us returning politics back to the people, our state will never get to that level of development we want it. And that is what we believe in. And that is what this fight is all about. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I believe very strongly that your response we definitely elicit hope and, of course, uh, trust in the people of Edo State. Uh, we just go to the straight to the Zoom floor right now, and I have the pleasure to call on uh, Dalitin Ukbebulu Ray. Mm -hmm. Can we locate him and unmute him? Dalitin Ukbebulu Ray, please be reminded that you have 90 seconds, a minute, 30 uh, seconds to ask your question. Okay. Good evening, Your Excellency. I quickly want to dwell on security since that is the, the topic for the day. I am Darlington Dupere I am a Leeds United Kingdom, the publisher of Olika Reporters uh, News, online news. I want to find out what the, the governor, the questions actually the governor or the deputy, any one of them can take it, the plans they have to secure the state from the hands of uh, the full and enhancement. Right now, as we speak, we can, I can tell you categorically as a journalist by the investigation we carried out and our publication that some communities in Edo North, communities in Edo South, communities in Edo Central, and as we speak, not doing their daily activities or what they are known for farming because the full and enhancement are taking over their farmland and raping, kidnapping, and killing our people. Now, we have also found out 
that uh, the APC government is uh, is uh, a government that is friendly to the Fulani people and the Fulani henchmen. What do we intend to do to have confidence re uh, returned to these communities? For example, a community like uh, Ambani okay, Kaka. Sorry, uh, Darlington, I, I don't wish to be rude. I'm sure the governor already understand the direction of the question. We quickly want to take the next okay. person. Thank Please. you. Uh, we need to maximize time. Sorry, sir. Uh, that's, the that's next right. person to ask a question, I'm sure that one is noted by, by His Excellency, is Brown Osen again. Are you there? Can we unmute him or her? Brown, okay, him. Can we unmute Brown Osen again, please? Brown Osen again. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Please, just go straight to the question, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I, just, I would like to thank the Excellency for making our time to take questions on issues um, that matters to us. And I'd also like to thank the host, Dr. Lorenta and uh, Cole, that has made it possible for us to refocus on conversation that is important to the people. Um, my question is, a lot has happened the news media, and it is very easy to become uh, desensitized to the people. And uh, we, the Edo people in diaspora, are very passionate people, and uh, we are very, also very educated people. And some of us believe that um, we are more equipped to become Prime Minister of uh, Canada or Prime Minister of uh, Britain, but we cannot just. Uh, decide to return home for reasons uh, based on the issue of security. I was uh, going to ask the state government because uh, some of us understand that um, the um, um, Southwest have started um, their own policing system. When is Edo State going to start its own um, policing system? As well as um, uh, if there's anything on the mega plan on how to fight uh, against um, poverty as well as to give Okay, justice. Mr. Brown, sorry, I don't wish to be rude again. Uh, the time has elapsed. I'm mm -hmm. sure the governor, his excellency, is taking note of that. We quickly want to take the third one, you know, before the his excellencies, you know, will uh, respond. And this one is coming from uh, Itohan, Ivaha Ivagaru. Please, is she there? Itohan Ivagaru. Please, let's unmute her if she's there, please. Hello, good evening. I'm um, just going to put myself on camera. So my question for the governor and the deputy governor, I hope to be amplified, um, is really youth-based. I currently represent um, youth voices at our local government here at um, Toronto City Council. So I'm hoping to have some of my thoughts amplified on this uh, call very briefly. My question simply is, uh, I think there's a misconception when it comes to I'm Sorry, I, I think there's a misconception when it comes to, uh, when it comes to youth and um, you know the security that goes on in Edo State or anywhere in Nigeria. Of course, you know a huge uh, reason for thuggery in Nigeria, of course, is um, unemployment. But I think it goes beyond that. When you compare the systems to any other systems in the diaspora, one thing that I think we lack in Nigeria is you know that. That's that path for communication um, with our local government in, 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 all, in all aspects. I feel like the youth in many ways uh, feel very left out, which leads them to have disrespect for the people that they should ultimately have the respect for, the people who they should be able to communicate with and join hands with. So my question for um, your excellency, both excellencies here, Deputy Governor and Governor Obasaki is, what are you guys doing to really ensure the youth of Nigeria, most specifically Edo State, that there will be a clear path for communication. That there will be a um, there will be a, a way to network with uh, you know you guys at our local government to ensure that all our matters are heard because it goes beyond just unemployment. Many times the youth just don't care because they say, you know what, we can't really put our hand in. So if we can't put our hand in, let's go against. So I'm hoping you guys okay. can answer my question. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you very much, Itohan. Uh, we've got three questions. Uh, I'm sure the Excellencies have taken note. The first one borders on uh, Fulani Hesme. 
the second one borders on state policing, and of course, the third one, I think, borders on, uh, you know, uh, the voice of the people being heard by government. Um, but your excellency, sir, <laughs> Governor Godwin Obaseki, I think he's actually would like to take a go at the one for the full enhancement. Please, can we unmute him? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I think there's also some technical issues again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, while we are waiting for His Excellency, uh, yes. this is a team. The government is always uh, a continuum. And uh, mm. I think the Deputy Governor can quickly. Yeah. I think he's back now. Okay, he's back. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The issue of uh, Fulani headsmen as it relates to security in Nigeria must be seen within a broader context of national security. Mm. Um, but this is a problem that's you know, affecting the whole of the Sahel of Africa. But that's not enough excuse to justify why it's continuing to happen. Clearly, um, much more could and should be done, particularly because our security structure is highly centralized. Uh, you've heard in this conversation that even though I am the governor of the state and the chief security officer, I have very little control over the apparatus, the security apparatus in my state. Okay, why is that the police? Control over the police. I don't Maybe have control they are over the police. I have seen, uh, and therefore, um, that limits my capacity as a governor to have the instruments of coercion, the instruments of state to affect security to the extent that we should. However, what we have done in Edo State is to rethink the, the security architecture of the state. Am I being heard? Yes, sir, we're hearing you, sir. Yes, okay. we can hear you. To rethink the security architecture of Edo, of Edo State and to see how we can align it with what exists at the federal level today. Um, security is local. And uh, because the crimes are committed at, in, you know, within certain localities. So what we have done is to look at security from the base, from the communities, and to see how we can organize security at the communities through the vigilante um, or you know, civil defense arrangement. Um, fine, we cannot buy sophisticated weapons for them, but for you know, what the law allows them to use now, we are supporting them. Um, we are also re, um, revamping our forest guards. I mean, because these are people who are trained to go into the forest and can get information. We are also organizing and helping put together our hunters associations because we realize that a lot of these headsmen operate in the forest. Um, uh, uh, and so we're trying to support them you know, uh, and with, um, with organization, with um, mobility, so that they can um, respond very quickly to, to crimes. We are also giving them communication tools so that they can report incidents, report um, whatever occurrences they see in the forests or in, you know, in communities into a central location. We are also partnering with the federal government's new initiative in terms of community policing where they intend to hire a, you know, train a constabulary force for communities. So there'll be a constable in every community and we will then align that to what the vigilantes, the hunter associations and all the other forest guards are doing in those communities. Security is about intelligence gathering and um, the more we can get more intelligence and prepare response we believe that we will be able to deal with um, with the incident. But we, we like I said, uh, more can be done if we get a lot more support from the federal government. Um, so, so I don't know if that answers your question as it relates to the, the, the issue of uh, local security and the headsmen clashes. Uh, so our response, in a nutshell, our response to the headsmen, uh, former headsmen clashes First, to separate these clashes. There are 
There are, there are two co components. There are those that are just normal, um, normal conflicts between people who are grazing, who are you know grazing their cows, and the owners of the farms. And then there are the, the, the ones that are more um, gruesome, the ones that are, uh, are actually you know it's like it's like um, they are headsmen on the surface, but underneath it, these are real bandits and criminals who go in to just kill, rape, and kidnap. So we try to separate those. Uh, for those who, in the latter category, who are just shared criminals, those ones come with very sophisticated weapons, and we need a lot of help from federal forces to uh, combat them. But for the uh, earlier category of those who are just grazing and have conflicts in the communities, they already have a dispute resolution, resolution mechanism through which such conflicts are resolved. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Excellent. I'm sure the Deputy Governor will want to take uh, a go at, uh, of course, I see from what the Excellency's response, of course, he has actually answered the first two questions bordering on the uh, full and the and the state police. Uh, I think the Deputy Governor will now want to take a go at uh, the last question, which I think borders actually on the relationship between the people and government bridging the gap. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If if I heard her very well, uh, uh, she also talked about employment, uh, job opportunities, and, mm -hmm. and and that. Yeah. Uh, what we have done uh, uh, at the inception of this administration was to because we promised that uh, we're going to create jobs, and what we've done is to create a system. Uh, it's part of our institutionalizing our programs. We have a program we call a do job. And that uh, a do job, we monitor jobs, we match job, we monitor the number of jobs we created, we monitor the number of jobs lost. So every month we monitor that particular thing. And that also, I do job also help to activate a lot of things from the young ones, the, especially the unemployed and the skilled and unskilled. We created a system where we train and retrain. We created a system where we have uh, innovation ops and creative ops where this artisan also are given opportunity to, to do things. Because we also discover that the easiest way to actually solve the issue of insecurity beyond, is not just by building uh, prison yards, it's also to create opportunity. And it's like a one-stop shop. We are dealing with issue of unemployment and we're also helping to deal with the issue of trafficking. So because when there is something to do, when there's a job to do at home, uh, it make uh, 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 traveling out for greener pasture very on, uh, uh, it will not be attractive. And so we've done that through a do job. And in terms of communication, we have a system in place uh, that deal with it from bottom up. We've created uh, a lot of appointment for us to be able to communicate government policies down to the world. What we've decided, what we did is to make sure that our policies are from the world. Everything we do from the budget end comes from the world and from bottom up approach that we approach all our things. So we have in every world, for instance, we have special assistance to the governor that his responsibility is not only to monitor in terms of security, but also to check projects and issues that border in that community. And we get feedback through the office of the social advisor political to the governor. So with that, we are able to also pass the message through that same source to the community. And in education, we have what we call school management board in every ward. And we also, that also help us to collate ideas, collate management system, and also help us to drive home policies of government to the world, because most time things end up at the state level. That's what we found out when we came in and we decided that it's had to be bottom up approach. And that's why we created those uh, 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 programs to help us drive home government policies and also to make sure that it's not like top down, but we are formulating policies that are bottom up. Yeah, in, a, in, a, in addition to her, I mean, I really liked your question. Um, you see, this the whole concept of us being in government and talking about mega making it a great again is to address that issue that you raised, which is of co great concern to us. 
because it's about tomorrow, it's about the young people of today. How do you get, get them to have a sense of belonging, to feel that this is our society, this is our community, and how do we contribute, you know, and, be, and, be, and feel that we are heard? Um, and at the base of it all is rethinking and revamping our educational system. You know, what you are taught and how you are taught at a very early age is very, very important in forming your attitude and your response to your society or community. We noticed that that was broken and people, unfortunately, the people who, came, who were there before us, they didn't seem to care. It was all about what they could make for themselves while mm. in government. And, you know, they thought they had options. You know, they could take as much and then send their own children abroad or escape the system, have them destroy the system. So what, are, what we are about is how to rebuild the base. And that's what my deputy was saying. How, you know, you can affect community at the base, affect young people at a very early age, give them the proper foundations, give them proper training, proper education, prepare them for work, retool their education so that it's education for employment, and then begin to create an enabling environment for society to thrive, for the young people to thrive, for them to feel a sense of involvement, for them to be able to actualize themselves in life. That is what this is all about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was a very, very detailed explanation. So shall we move swiftly, Comrade Lante, to the <laughs> next panelist? Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Go ahead. So our next panelist is Nekmen Obasuki. She's joining us from Canada today. Nekmen is a Benin cultural propagator and the founder of Nebo TV in Toronto. Miss Nekmen, what's your question, please? Can we find Nekmen? Hello. Too? Yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello, we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, Your Excellency. Um. My name is Nekme Obasoge from Canada. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your reputable work in Edo State, your love for the, for the people of Edo State. Thank you so much. Your Excellency, you know that um, security is very paramount in this upcoming election. You have many supporters, but some of your supporters are very bold campaigning for your re-election. And there are security threats from the opposition. My question is, as the incumbent governor of a do state, how will you provide security for some of your supporters who are receiving threats messages from the opposition and deal with any security issue that will limit the ability of a do citizens from voting in this next election, Your Excellency? Thank you, Nekman. Um, should I answer or we'll take more questions? No, I think this is just the one for now. Okay, thank you, Nekman. Um, yes, you have raised some, you have raised an issue that is very, uh, you know, germane and it's of great concern to us. Um, I am the chief security officer. It's my responsibility to ensure that people, you know, lives and property are safe in Edo State. But when the security, the chief security officer is the one being attacked, mm -hmm. what do you do? I think that's the key question. Mm. Um, a couple of things. First, last week, I spoke to the, uh, to the international community, a group of diplomats, to inform them as to what is going on in Edo State. And um, I mean, part of what we're doing with this session is for all you also to raise your voices and speak as one and implore the federal government, the security agencies that have the, you know, the, the force of states that have the instruments of coercion to please do what is right by ensuring they protect us and they help save Edo from crisis. The opposition party, for the opposition party is a deliberate strategy. They know that they cannot win an election. They know clearly that Edo people are in one voice and one accord, and we've decided on where we want to go. So for them, they just want to be spoilers. Let them. Mm, that's, uh, we can just give him a brief minute for him to get back. Awesome. Let us just cry. 
create as much crisis. So there are strategies. First, a lot of negative propaganda and, and falsehoods. And secondly, intimidation, you know, tearing down my posters, smashing cars, yes, um, you know, sending threatening calls. But we are, we are much more than them. So they cannot overwhelm us. That is the good side of, you know. Mm. Um, but we, they want to provoke us into violence so that they will have excuses to either postpone the elections or to declare the elections as inconclusive. Mm -hmm. These are all tools of the opposition to, 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 to truncate democracy. And we have reported, we know who the culprits are, we know who their sponsors are, and um, we'll just keep putting pressure and I will just implore all of you to you know, come out, condemn it, tell your governments abroad, let them know what is going on in Edo states. Mm. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, as a matter of fact, this uh, particular question, you know, and the response from His Excellency is uh, one matter that is at the heart of the, of the whole situation in a two state. And uh, before I actually call in the, the next uh, group of uh, 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 Zoom floor, you know, um, members, I would like to recognize uh, the presence of uh, Chief Charles Taku from the International Court of Justice. And uh, we are glad that he's here, he's listening. And of course, from the international community, you know, we hope that uh, the needful would be done by the international community through Chief Taku to equally, you know, zero their eye and focus a lot, you know, on this electoral process. Uh, hopefully that may bring some checks and, uh, you know, uh, balance as it were. Uh, but I'll just go to the Zoom floor right now. And the list I have here, I have Dr. Grace Ogeho in Norma. Can we locate her and uh, unmute her, please? Dr. Grace Ogeho in Norma. Yes. Let's be reminded that you have just one minute, 30 seconds to ask your okay. question. Okay, I'll go straight to the question. And I thank you, Your Excellencies. I'm standing on the existing protocol. Uh, my own uh, honorable uh, governor, I just want to uh, bring to your attention, uh, four years ago you were in New York and you had promised a wounded, the only local government without a general hospital. And that is the hospital we started and you said you were going to help us complete it. That is, it was awarded, the contract was awarded and up till now the hospital have not started. So oh. now when I call people at home to vote for you, they say, no, you did not fulfill your promise of that hospital. I'm still okay. persuading them. So okay. are you going to promise us that your second tenure will we have a um, general hospital in one place? Thank, Thank you, you know. very much. I will quickly Thank zero into Gladys right now, Gladys Williams, to Thank ask you know, that question. question. Okay. Let me answer I, would do, I don't promise that I will put a general hospital in one day because the general hospital is not the solution to our healthcare challenges. We have mm -hmm. almost four general hospitals in Edo State. They're not working or providing healthcare. So adding more general hospitals does not mean healthcare. What we are doing is something which is much more comprehensive. In Huon, there, for instance, there are about 24 communities or 25 communities where you don't have any health facility. What we're doing is building from the base putting primary health care centers in each community, ensuring that there is um, light, if you have solar, solar power, uh, that there's water, there's accommodation for health workers, and then there's technology so that we can tend to people who have ailments before the ailments get serious. Um, yes, we will consider as part of our health plan at some point to build a trauma a trauma hospital in Ohonde, you know, in that axis, if we can't deal with uh, the accident victims in the other existing facilities in uh, around Iroa and in Benin. Part of our problems as a country is we keep building, building, building. We keep focusing on infrastructure. And in, we found that that infrastructure alone does not provide the service. We have, you know, for us as a government, we do not want to deceive people anymore. 
we've had the opportunity now to really review and understand the challenges we face in the healthcare system. It's first strengthening the, the, the primary healthcare center, making sure you bring healthcare closer to people. Um, I cannot accept any situation anymore where women are being delivered with torchlights in their communities. It's, it, it's, it's unacceptable. Uh, I, and and, and we'll rather focus our resources in building the base and have a few um, centers of excellence. We have a few uh, well-equipped general hospitals. Our general hospitals should now be referral centers. It's not, not where people go and treat malaria, typhoid, or even have deli uh, you know, uh, deliveries. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with the response of the His His Excellency, of course, do people can be sure that there's hope for a better mm -hmm. hope for tomorrow and a bright one at that. Uh, I quickly want to call on Gladys Williams now to ask her her question. Please, can we unmute Gladys if she's there? She's unmuted already. Gladys Williams. Hello, please. Hello everyone. Good evening. Good evening I Gladys. want to use this medium to thank my SLSC, my father, his SLSC Governor God will not say Obaseki, the Matan one of her your SLS sister, I thank you for your time spending with us all, all together. I must say you are a great man. And I go for that straight to my question. My question here is, your SLS sister, the, the incident of the burning of the market is really not good at all and is affecting most of our mothers, our widows in the state. And uh, for the past, uh, the last few months, you promised them and uh, they all promised really and they rely on you and they are hoping to hear from you and they are willing to get from you and i want to know what is the fate of this our mothers our sisters our brothers what are their fate of relying on you what are their experts what are they expecting from you what did you have for them your sls thank you very much thank you thank, thank thank you very much you know as part of the opposition strategy they started burning markets they burned mm -hmm. four markets yeah. right Bond Ogiso, the bond yeah. uh, over market. And you know, and you know, even those people were arrested, I can tell you the police refused to prosecute. But we've said that doesn't, you know, I mean, we we cannot continue to leave our people suffering. I've made 200 million naira available. We've done um what we we are vetting of all the traders whose names uh, with their shops that were given. As at last week when we had a meeting with them, we said, look, um, we want to, they were asking that we give them grants only, that we should just give them money. Uh, and we said, fine, um, we could do uh, some of that. So we'll give you some grants, but we'll also give you interest-free loans to rebuild your businesses. So we'll, we, you know, we've, we've marked a certain amount of the, a certain portion of the 200 as grants, you know, to, so we can give everybody affected as you know, an amount to you know, use in restarting their business. But in addition, we'll have a portion which are interest-free loan where people who can now take more money but pay back that portion. We've vetted them. The um, upper market, I think about 120. Um, you know, the so market, I can't, I can't remember. But in, on the whole, they, they, there's about 400 of them. All right, sir. Okay, thank you so thank much, you. Your Excellency. Uh, that again elicits hope for a do people. Thank you so much, sir. Um, before I take, I mean, I call on Walter Ehaza from the Zoom floor audience. Uh, I see you, uh, or more, or more Agbons, Irike Finn. Uh, you are thanking the Deputy Governor, His Excellency, Right Honorable Felix Schwaibu for his loyalty. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sure he gets your message. Now I call on Walter Ihaza to ask her his question. Mr. Walter, sir, if we can find him, let's unmute him quickly. You've got 90 seconds to ask your question. Is it there? Walter Ihaza, is it there? If it's not there, I'm going to move on to the next person. All right, I'll call on uh, Peter Imalenua. Iman Lenuwa, Peter. Are you there, sir? Peter, Iman Lenuwa, can we find him and unmute him, please? Yes, 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 yes. I'm here. Okay, you've got 90 seconds, yes. sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning all from here, Australia. Uh, my question is for the Deputy uh, Governor. 
Honorable Deputy, sir, you have strongly spoken about your loyalty and the reasons you became an activist, that you will never, you, that you will never compromise your conscience for just. Please, can you tell us what you know about the governor that we don't know? Thank you. That's a brilliant one. Your Excellency, sir. Right Honorable Philip Schreiber. Your Excellency, unmute your mic, sir. Try to unmute it. Meet me. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that, is, that is a very good question and very tricky also. Yeah, <laughs> what I know about yeah, what I know about the governor is that it's a man that actually uh, believe that Edo State has to be an industrial state, and Edo State have to take advantage of its geographical location. Uh, and also believe in the future of Edo State. And that is founded in all the policies that we are implemented today. And before he became governor, he actually gave everything to the state for eight years. He was the chairman of the economic team and he was the brain boss of that administration. And he was able to draw a lot of uh, uh, grants and a lot of uh, 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 investment into Edo State. And as governor, he has continued with that process. And beyond making Edo State a hub, he has also started building the foundation for the future of the young ones. And you will see it just like he just answered the issue of healthcare. What we are doing today in the educational sector from the Edo Best uh, revolution that he has started, in the next uh, four to five years, you will see a revolution in education. We are now having children that are learning, not schooling. In the past, they are schooling, now they are learning. Mm -hmm. So this governor that you see is a sincere person and is a man that do not say what he cannot do. Even when you put a gun on his, on his head, he will just say it the way it is. He's not part top, he has a focus, he's focused, his eyes is on the ball and everything about him, like he has always said, he has spent 32 years of his life in private sector and helping the private sector to grow. Now he's coming home to deal with the issue of Edo where those in diaspora and those within the country can have an Edo that is not only secure, but an Edo that wealth will be redistributed through creation of jobs and creation of opportunity. So that at the end of the day, Edo will be the true Edo. So uh, the governor, in a simplified manner, is a sincere man, is a man that believes in the future of our state, is a man that you can trust. Thank you very much. Uh, there is no better person to do this, but the Right Honorable uh, Deputy Governor himself, uh, Right Honorable uh, uh, Philip Schreiber, thank you so much. Before I you know, uh, pass uh, the button to my colleague to call the next panelist, uh, of course, we see you, we hear you. This is a message from uh, Saliu Irega. And uh, he or she says, SBMC is the best thing to ever happen to our children. He says, he or she is very proud of the governor and his team for doing a beautiful job. Thank you very much, Saliu Irega. I'm sure the governor and his deputy, they hear you and they hear Edu people. Yes. Lady Esosa, Sorry, can I just, oh. Okay, the governor wants to say uh, Can I yes. talk about SBMC? I'm not sure how many people really know what the SBMC is. Okay. The SBMC is a school-based management committee. Every Edo Best school in Edo State has a committee of, you have to say, volunteers, people who live in the community who are more like the supervisors of that school. I think we got some technical issues. They've right. taken an interest because the school is in their community. And they, they, they're made up of teachers, they're made up of parents, they're made up of uh, you know, community leaders, clergy people, and they have done an amazing work. What, that, what, what, what they've helped us do is to take ownership of the school system. In the past, government goes in there, builds schools, and before you know what, the furniture is stolen, nobody cares if the teacher comes to class, nobody cares if the children are in school, 
But members of the school basement uh, based management committee have taken the schools as, as theirs. They've adopted the children in the schools, and our school system is now working at the base. I want to thank all of them most sincerely. And for all, all of you in the diaspora, please, you can take, please take an interest in your school, the school you attended. You will go to the Adobe's website, locate it, and you can support the school based management committee in your community. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Now, before I move on to the next panelist, panelist number four, I would just want to quickly remind the Excellency on uh, Mr. Taku's question, which uh, you were trying to answer earlier before the line went a little bit uh, busy. So Mr. Taku had some questions for you earlier. I'm not sure if you remember what the question was yes, all about. I, I, I remember. It had to do with the issue of irregular migration and the number of Edo people, citizens, who get caught in this unfortunate um, uh, incidents or situations, and um, the kind of help and support that the diaspora can give. Um, I want to just let the House know that, you know, when we came into office, one of the things we could never live with was this whole issue of human trafficking and irregular migrations by Edo people. I mean, you could remember the stigma at that point in time. You know, you when you talk about trafficking, it had, you know, it was all about Edo. At one point in time, there were no less than 30,000 Edo young men and women in you know in um, Libya trying to cross over, across the Mediterranean into Europe. And that was a thing of concern. But even what was even more worrisome for me was while I was campaigning in 2016. It was an issue you could not talk about. You know, it was, oh, no, 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 don't talk about it because, oh, it's one issue that brings a lot of money home for families. And I'm saying, what? I mean, so I, it couldn't be talked about. If you mentioned it, it, you might not get votes. That was how bad it was. So for us, once we got in, we were very clear and determined that it was something we had to stop because it had moved beyond even trafficking, irregular migration, it had you know, moved into slavery. Edo people who were never sold into slavery yeah. in ancient times were now selling themselves or being sold into slavery. And for me, it was totally, totally unacceptable. Yes. So we had to deal with it from two perspectives. First, how do we just curb the incidence of human trafficking today? And we set up a task force, um, which has been applauded by the international community mm -hmm. And I want to use this opportunity to thank the chairman of the task force and members of the task force. Um, you know, the records are there. You know, two years on, Edo mm. is no longer the capital or the hub of human trafficking. Mm. Um, so that's what we've done on the short term end. Yes. The long term end, that's why we've continued to be, that's why we want to continue. We were fixing those things that made those children make the wrong decisions in the first place. You know, proper education, rebuilding the communities, providing infrastructure and amenities in those communities so that home is like home. You know, you cannot say, I mean, what sort of life is it when you say anywhere else but home, mm. you know? Um, so we're, we're doing all of those and then, but you know, we like to travel, our people like to travel. And so part of the conversations we're having with, with the, um, you know, with uh, the, the task force is having with the EU and some other countries, is that fine, even if people have to travel, let them travel legally. We'll create centers here, centers for train people in hospitality, in nursing, in the skills. So even if people have to travel, they don't have to travel through the Sahara and under those treacherous and dangerous circumstances. So those are the things we're doing. And I want to thank the diaspora, the Edo diaspora. They've been quite supportive. They've mm -hmm. given us information. They've helped, you know, rescue people who are caught in all sorts of, you know, unfortunate circumstances abroad. And, um, you know, we, we, I think we have made significant progress. It's something we're proud of. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why some of the European countries are very concerned about the Edo elections, that they don't want a situation where we'll go back, you know, because this whole politics of Godfatherism and what have you, and it's sort of things that have encouraged that situation. Mm -hmm. The last point I want to make, and which I stressed to the um, diplomats I spoke with the, the, you know, uh, last week, and I, I'm sure the, the, the Dr. 
we, you know, made a point that let's let the message be loud and clear to all of those who are perpetuating electoral violence that, you know, the there are international ramifications and consequences. Mm. Those who are who are perpetuating electoral violence and they think they can throw a door into crisis, mm -hmm. let them be told that they or their families will not be allowed to travel out of Edo or Nigeria. And we will deal with the consequences of the crisis they are trying to create. They cannot create problems and escape. Mm. I, hope they've, I hope they know and the international community should tell them that. Excellent. Thank you very much, Excellency. So let's move swiftly to panelist number four. He's Mr. Hubert Igbinoba. He's joining us from Australia today. Mr. Igbinoba is an international logistic expert in Australia. And Mr. Igbinoba, give, give, give us your question, please, Mr. Igbinoba. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, the deputy as well. Uh, my question is, um, you said you don't have full control over security of the state. Um, can the state create its own security forces? The state, Edo State Security Forces, is it possible? And the second question will be. Um, uh, Mr. Hubert, sorry, I'm very you are sorry. allowed to ask one you question, just have one please. Question to okay. One question, please. And that All will right. be taken by the Deputy Governor, the Honorable Deputy Governor, please. Yes. We are muting. Deputy please. Governor, please. His Excellency, Right Honorable Philip Shrivo, please. Your Excellency, can you unmute yourself? Sir? Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, just like the governor said earlier on the issue of security, uh, we have our own security architecture. And if you, and that security architecture actually was formulated when the present IG was still AIG in a district. And that is what is leading to uh, the community policing they are trying to uh, establish now, which has been launched in the in 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 in, in, in the country in this Edo state. It was launched in Edo state and is they are doing it around the country. But beyond that, we locally we are we decided to invest in the uh, vigilantes and the local hunters, because that will help us to deal with the issue of this S-men. And also uh, the POF is also there to help us gather information from all the uh, wards and units. Uh, we have uh, established that outfit to also back up the community policing that is presently on. And just last two weeks, the senatorial uh, launches were done and they are in the process of formulating and collating the names that we start up that program. But what we have done as a state is just to invest more on the vigilantes and to reorganize them properly and also make them work. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much. We, we are going to go straight to the Zoom floor panelists again. We're going to take three questions. But just before we do that, as a rejoinder to the last question, sir, uh, you know, this, this uh, you know, section is actually bothering on uh, security, focusing on security. Recently, sir, the news, you know, we got a, you know, we got a news across, you know, um, the diaspora that the entourage of the governor, you know, while campaigning in Edo, Edo North was actually attacked. Now, apart from that, we have seen pockets of situations where supporters of the go of, of Governor uh, Obaseki get attacked. One yes. actually, you know, was even on social media recently, you know, making a whole lot of wave and all of that. Looking at all, all of this, you know, people want to know, sir, what is government actually doing as a decisive step to deal with this menace? Mm. Very good. That was the, that was exactly question that was uh, asked by Mr. Joseph Ogbamudia uh, earlier, who said, talk about one of the most recent terrifying incidents that happened on Wednesday, in which Mr. John Bull Imande, who openly supports your excellency, was grievously attacked and beaten up in the community. And Mr. Uh, Ogbamudia wanted to know, what plans do you have in place to assure your supporters that they are safe to openly support you or travel to the to, to the pulling booths on the day of the election to actually vote for you without them getting hurt? Your Excellency, please. 
the deputy governor take that uh, because he's been working. Yes. Yeah, good. Can we unmute the deputy governor, please? Quite a bit on this. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, the the issue of uh, security. We uh, apart from working with the conventional security affixed, the police, the army, we also have, uh, as a matter of assuring our people to come out, we have also uh, mobilized them. We are actually mobilizing them to just gather information and let us have them. We are working towards making sure that the military areas where those pockets of uh, 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 violence is possibly going to happen to deploy a lot of police and military people in that area. But beyond that, we are also strengthening our vigilante system and the hunters to make sure that everybody secure is area. Because whether you like it or not, uh, uh, the, the, these people are just few, few persons. And that is why we also, uh, 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 we've also written to the security agency, just like last week, when we got intelligent of uh, some of them being imported into the state to create, to cause havoc, we were able to, through the, what the network we have set up to get intelligence and we're able to uh, 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 resolve those issues fast. But one thing is, uh, unlike uh, institutions elsewhere, our institutions here are very weak and they can be swayed to any direction. And that is a major problem we're having mostly with these people because how will you explain that you have intelligence that Comrade Adam Shomole, for instance, is harboring criminals in his house and is arming these young ones with, uh, uh, with uh, weapons and it's not being arrested. Mm. And this information is before the security agencies. You understand? So that is the dilemma. That is the contradiction in the constitution where the governor is the chief security officer, where control of this security is from Abuja. And that is where I agree with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Charles Taku that institutionalizing all our, our, our system will be the way out. But this problem is actually at the federal level. But at the state, at the state, we are mobilizing our own local uh, security to make sure that we give cover to our people and make sure that on that election day, there won't be uh, violent. And if there are, it will be isolated. So much. Well, and, and also, um, you know, it's a matter we are taking up with the federal authorities mm -hmm. and one of the, 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 the possible dangers, because this is a third time, I, you know, I'm being attacked as the chief security officer of the state and no arrest or prosecution has ever mm -hmm. occurred. I was attacked in the gates of the house of uh, Comrade Shomole a few months ago in the company of the Oba of Lagos. Nothing happened. You know, because the federal, uh, first, uh, the federal agencies responsible for reasons best known to them decided to do nothing, despite our complaints. I, I was attacked in the company of um, some other PDP governors when we went to visit the upper of Benin's palace, and it was clear there was the evidence. People, you know, holding banners from Captain Hosa were there. We were attacked. We reported. In fact, every time we report, the the, 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 you know, it's quite interesting that when we report these incidents, they turn around to come and arrest our supporters. Yeah. And, if, you know, the case in, um, in um, Yamo, uh, the Apana, last week was even clear. The area commander of the police force was there supervising the boys shooting. Mm. <laughs> so, wow. You know, but that's, we have to develop our democracy. Mm. To, that we are met, we are much more than them. We cannot and should not be intimidated, and um, you know we we will overcome, we will prevail. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very um, much. This is uh, we are going to see, we are going to go to the Zoom floor audience. Uh, apparently, um, of course, Edo people are listening, and like the mm -hmm. governor said, mm -hmm. and rightly so, we are more than them. Okay, uh, it's my honor man, to uh, quickly call on uh, Ambassador Ugochuku Mora. Please, can we locate him or her? Ugochuku Mora. Is the person still there? If not, let's yes, go I'm, to the yes, next I'm one. Here. Okay, yes, sir. You've got Good evening, Your Excellencies. Good evening, Your Excellencies. 
Um, I stand on existing protocols. My name is Ambassador Guchukumora. I'm the General Secretary of PDP UK Chapter. We are very delighted to have His Excellency to the PDP, the only political party in Nigeria that has proved capacity to sustain national development and growth. We are very particular about the election in Edo State. We are victory, Your Excellency, not because of the benefit of the Edo people to your continued performance, also because we want to send the message that we go beyond the shores of Edo State, that Godfatherism will be buried in this generation. Your Excellency, I'm very happy that this forum is centered on peace, security, and election violence. It might interest you to know that the PDP UK chapter have developed a technology that is capable to monitor elections in all polling units and transmit election results live. I would want to work with you in this regard as we move forward in making sure the election rigging and violence becomes an end story in Nigeria. We've recently sent a letter to you. I don't know if you've received it, Your Excellency, through the South South Caucus of the party, asking for your permission to support in your campaign. We want to commit resources. We want to have the opportunity to be able to do that. And also, Your Excellency, we also want to let you know that we are aware of the intimidation and violence in Edo State. And we want to work with your campaign so we can make the international community here in the UK, which is what we do for the party here. We have contact with several embassies in the UK where we can let them know and put pressure on the government to make sure that the will of the people will survive. So Your Excellency, I want to thank you and assure you that the people of Edo State is on your side. We've spoken to our people and they've assured us of their support for you. Thank you, Your Excellency. I remain Ambassador Guchukumara, General Secretary, PDP, UK Chapter. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And we're really open and willing to collaborating and cooperating with you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, we move on to the next person still uh, from the Zoom uh, uh, floor. Uh, this person, uh, Mr. Joseph Arame, please, let's locate him and unmute him quickly. Joseph Arame, are you there? Can we locate Mr. Joseph? If we cannot, then I quickly want to move to the next. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, sir. Go ahead, sir. Good, um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies. Um, um, I want to thank you for your time um, and commitment to the development of our states. I'm very concerned because um, this meeting has been on secure borders and security. I want to quickly, it, it might sound as an advice or maybe a question, I don't know. I would really want to ask that we do um, um, a proper um, identification for these um, people that would be, um, we would be coming together or will be employed or hired. I don't know if it's a committee. I don't know how that's going to work in terms of security, but I'm talking about doing like a proper screening verification so as to know who these responsibilities are given to. Like I tell people sometimes, one thing they do, they say the police force, the police force. I ask this question, what, what background check sort of have, has the government done on these people before handing them over guns and weapons to protect our people. So this is where we find um, really huge problems um, around our security apparatus. So that, that's just all I want to say because of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that is a, a comment. I will uh, equally want to quickly call on uh, a Sosa, a do about 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 here. A Sosa, a do about here. Please, are you there? Can we unmute him or her, please? A Sosa, a there. About here, a Sosa. Can you unmute yourself, please? 
Okay, if it's not ready, can we move on to the next person, please? Uh, Chief Kingsley Igbinoba, we need to maximize time as much as possible, please. His Excellency will be leaving shortly. Please let us take uh, this. Uh, yeah, keep the time rolling, please. Please. Now, if we can find that, please, can we just find uh, Barry Idemudia? Hello. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. I'm here. Why are you? Uh, why are you stepping over? Uh, Hello. Your your size back on now. Why were you? Your, doing? Ex your Excellency. Uh, Hello. I'm. Uh, I'm Chief uh, Kingsley, you known as uh, Ibinosa, the traditional head of the uh, Unwame community. Um, uh, I have got uh, a question and a commendation, although I don't think there will be time for the commendation now. Uh, the security, or so, sorry, the insecurity in the River Rhine uh, area of uh, Edo State, or rather the river bounded communities like my Unwame is alarming. Um, we've got kidnappers continuously using uh, these communities as hideouts and dumpy grounds for their victims. Uh, we have had that twice this year. Uh, also, the oil bunkers, they are known to move uh, petroleum products through these communities. Again, I've experienced that, uh, I mean, I experienced that on a regular basis. Uh, now, the question is, uh, uh, will the government of Edo State collaborate with traditional rulers like me and uh, the river uh, bounded community? Okay, thank you very and, much. Uh, I think, uh, the, sorry, sir, I have to cut in because hello? of time. Yes. Uh, Excellency, I want to respond to that now. Just one second, sir. Your Excellency, sir, do you still have time for this? Yes, thank you very much. Yes, we are concerned about the Poor, I mean, the river Rhine communities and incidents of crime um, in those communities. Uh, what we have done is to collaborate with the Nigerian police force. And the Edo state government has invested in six gun boats. Um, and this is, these are the sort of things we do. Uh, that is, we use state funds to buy equipment and pass, pass, pass them on to the federal agencies because they, they are the ones authorized by the constitution to operate um, these uh, vessels and also provide the, the, the security in these um, in our waterways. So we've done that. Uh, we have about six gunboats. They are now operational. Uh, we built a marine, a police marine base uh, in Gele Gele, and we're building another in Olubo. Um, as two points, uh, we're collaborating with the Navy on the Benin River access, the, the Osse, Osse Benin River um, junction, uh, where they have a base. And we're sharing information and uh, putting in communication equipment and, and also liaison with, with communities, um, including their leadership, the traditional leaders, leaders within those communities to provide information so that we can um, determine and know where kidnapped victims are taken to and held and how to track them. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I will appeal quickly for us to take uh, Mr. Esusa who um, actually should have spoken before Chief Kingsley. Esosa, please, can you come on quickly, please? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. I just unmuted myself. Very quick, very... His Excellency, we leave us soon. Okay. okay, a very good evening to everybody and thank you for your contributions. Uh, your Excellencies, I have a very simple question. It is about uh, how uh, security will probably Im impact on investment opportunity for the future. What is the state government doing as we speak for the future regarding our security position or security strategy? I believe technology is key. And is there any uh, uh, clear uh, system already in place? Otherwise, we will just be talking. I believe that you have something in mind. Please share it with us. Thank you, Bart. Okay. Could that be a question for the for the honorable deputy? Yes, his that, excellency, right honorable uh, Philip Shribu can actually have a go at this. You can have a go at that, yes. Please, can we unmute him, please? Backroom staff. Honorable Shaibu, can we unmute himself? Okay. 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 All right. 
yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, it's it's a whole uh, uh, security package. Uh, like I said earlier, is dealing with the issue of employment, dealing with the issue of uh, opportunity for our people to get them first to have something doing, and that will first deal with uh, the issue of uh, idleness, which obviously will reduce insecurity. But in terms of uh, uh, the program we have, the, the end point actually is the uh, community policing, where the state can have control over its own security. Until that is done, we'll just depend on federal institutions. As the governor said earlier, we spend our money in buying equipment for the federal police, the army, and all the uh, security agencies in the state. We even go further to pay allowances to these security agencies. So at the end of the day, and that is why the governor suggested when the AIG is the one who did our security architecture, that there is need for community policing and also to have state police. And when we have this and we institutionalize them to the extent that it's not used by any politician to perpetuate mm -hmm. uh, fraud, then no. we can actually deal okay. with it. So th that is it. Because for now, we are just setting up systems where we collate information, intelligence, and, and this intelligence are still forwarded to the federal uh, agencies for implementation. And until we are able to get the National Assembly to actually pass that law to have state police and community police, Everything that we do is just to be just support, support. Because for instance, the vigilantes and the poor and the uh, hunters that we have set up to monitor this area, there, there are limits to the kind of weapons they can handle. So at the end of the day, they are just there to gather intelligence and move to this rule. In terms, we have a lot of things we have already planned. Technology also will help us to drive security. Uh, but these things are only going to collate intelligence and this intelligent implementation of this intelligence is still by the federal security so for us is for us to help i mean to get the national assembly to pass this law of establishing community police state police because at the end of the day we can fund it because presently we are actually buying most of the materials that they are using and also paying allowances to them Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much, Your Excellency, Right Honorable Philip Shwaibu. I I will let, most let uh, do people know now that uh, we have actually come to the high point of this uh, program. Yeah. Was and, that uh, the last uh, Zoom conference? Um, Zoom question, uh, Lamte. Uh, no, I think we've come to the high point of uh, okay. this uh, program, right. and uh, from that speech, from a uh, response from uh, the deputy governor, I want to quickly uh, thank all participants, but of course, pass the button to our lady in the house, uh, Dr. Loretta, uh, to give us uh, a closing remark. No, no, no. I think, um, I think this is not the end, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but this is where we stop today's program. I think the honorable deputy Governor should give us the closing remark. Your Honorable, Honorable Deputy, please. Um, yes, the Deputy Governor will be giving us a closing remark. Your Excellencies, we want to thank all of you, but it is very imperative that we actually thank all those behind the scenes yes. who make this happen every week. Um, from Australia to um, Tanzania, we have Adesua Basoha in America, Eredo Esosa from Canada, Amy Toya, Andrew Ohomba, Esosa Owen, Esosa Edo Giawere, Ikbamosa Aikitayi, Ikbamosa Oriahi, Isoke Ibia Joe and Higiamu Soy, Johnson Odibo Nekwe Obasi, Nosa Obakseki, Ken Oloye, Ambassador Matthew Becky Uwaifil, and we have Barrister Comrade Austin Osakwe, Dr. Nosa Obano from the US, and Peter Imalenoa, Australia, Emmanuel Obaze from Canada, Ethan Uzame, Frank Moses, Gloria Udwayekeme eh, Efemini, Greg Omorogbe, Henry Bakare from Italy, and Iore eh, Iyi from Italy as well. 
Jeffrey Obaze all the way from South Africa, and Joel Osakwe from Botswana. We have Johnson from Germany and Hubert from Australia, Ketty Salami from America, Lucky Omo from Mr. Courage from Ireland, Newton Igbinugun from Spain, um, Dr. Osara um, Obaseki from Nigeria, Don Pedro Obaseki. We have Pa Muhammad Igile from Boston, Gladys Williams, Uyi Odua Malaka. The names are endless. I cannot go on calling them, but we need to actually thank these people. And if both his excellencies can just give a word of thanks to these people and we close for the day. We'll see all of you again next week. Leave the floor for his excellencies, please. Right honorable sir. Please, can we unmute the deputy governor? Yes, sure being done. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 want, I want to join Loretta. You know, I just came from the parliament to become, to become deputy governor. So I want to say that you have moved the motion to thank everybody. And as a former parliamentarian, I second your motion for thanking everybody. Thank you very much. And, and I, I'm sure the moderator will hit the gavel to, to, to make it uh, uh, formal. But having said that, I also want to thank all participants in this uh, uh, program and to assure us that uh, for us, it's all about the people and the people first and the people it will always be first because we believe that when we do the will of the people, we are actually doing the will of God. Edo is a great state and the people of Edo are great people. And it has shown even from some all of you that are in diaspora, wherever you are, an Edo person is noticed from this greatness because we're always contributing to the development of the area where we belong. For us as a government, the governor of Edo State and all of us that are with him, we believe in the development of our state and the future of our state. We don't have any other state apart from Edo and together we'll make Edo a great state that it is. And I want to assure you that you can trust us because we are here to serve you. And by the grace of God, the election will not only be valid free, but by the grace of God, Mr. Governor and I will come back to conclude the first part and the second part of our, our vision. Government business is, is, is to continue, but I can assure you that you can trust us. And when you can trust us, obviously, our collective vision for our state will be actualized. Once again, I join Loretta to thank everybody. Thank you very much and God bless you Thank all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Your Excellency. <laughs> I want to assure you that the eyes have it. Motion adopted. And I will, uh, I don't know if the His Excellency, the Governor, Governor Gordon of Baseki, uh, will just have a last word for us before we, we close the night. Your Excellency, sir. Thank I can't really see him on screen. Perhaps. I don't think he's here. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Lady Esosa, I thought you had a, a word to say or something. Uh, no, I just want to say thank you to everyone. And uh, like I said every, earlier, uh, both the participants and the people behind the scene, it's been a, an absolutely pleasure to be with you all today. And thank you for coming and thank you for attending. Like I said, this is not the end, but this is where today's story ends. And may we all come back next week and we can have a different story again to tell. Uh, thank you very much. From me, Comrade Lanto Yoriaki, thank you for joining us. I will say good night. Have a good night, everyone. Hi, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.